In 2002, the Sturt Football Club would win their 13th Premiership against a dominant Central Districts outfit trying to achieve a three-peat. While Sturt would achieve the ultimate success, their story getting it would be filled with all the highs and lows football has to offer. Let's explore the story of the Double Blues of 2002. This journey begins at the end of the 1994 season. Sturt had finished last on the ladder with five wins. The Sturt board sacked then head coach Hayden Bunsen Jr. and replaced him with Phil Carmen. Carmen would not have an easy start as head coach. Not only coaching a bottom place team, the club would witness an exodus of players such as captain Jay Viney to North Adelaide, two-time Sturt leading goal kicker Jody Arnold, Stuart Wigney was seconded to Richmond, Damian Kitschke and Justin Brooks found new homes, Andrew Underwood and veteran ruckman Brett Leanett would also retire. Carmen, however, would be assisted by the loyal Bruce Lennon and John Richter. Dealt a poor hand, Carmen did his best recruiting who he could. He had managed to acquire the services of Julian Burton, who had played 46 games with the Port Magpies. This acquisition would prove beneficial as Burnt would be one of the club's best players for years to come. Carmen had appointed Chris Threadgold as the new captain of the club who would serve the position well. Carmen's double blues would not win a game in the 1995 season, finishing with a 0-22 record. It was feared that the Sturt Football Club would not exist in 1996. A merger with the North Adelaide Football Club was proposed, however the club's members led by Phil Sanders would not go down without a fight and managed to raise $250,000 to keep the organisation afloat. Despite recent history of the board quickly firing coaches, the club decided to retain Carmen for the 1996 season, possibly without an alternative. Despite the obvious negatives of the 95 season, the club saw the emergence of new ruckman Simon Feast, who had won the club's best and fairest in his first season of league football, and gutsy defender Tim Weatherald would have a tremendous start to his career. While new recruit Julian Burton topped the goal-kicking list with 33 majors, only having kicked four with his previous seasons at Port Adelaide. During Carmen's time at Sturt, he would constantly look externally for talent while also identifying players within his own ranks with potential. At the end of the 95 season, Carmen had managed to lure speedster Brody Atkinson from North Adelaide. Atkinson, who also previously played with St Kilda, had won a premiership with the Roosters in 1991 and was the reserves McGarry medalist in the same year, became one of Sturt's best players for the rest of his career, always in the McGarry medal discussion. Sturt would continue to face a difficult situation during the 1996 season. Its on-field situation had improved slightly with four wins but still unable to lift themselves from the bottom of the ladder. Coupled with this was also the off-field debt mentioned earlier. The players with immense talent still trying to find chemistry in its list was bolstered by the bloodings of Seamus Maloney and recruitment of delisted Collingwood Magpie Mark Petura. At the end of the 96 season, Carmen would commit to another recruiting endeavour, managing to secure the services of SANFL journeyman Mark Soderstrom and delisted Crow Matt Powell. Sturt would start the season in a slump, but managed to string some wins together in the latter half of the season and made finals, finishing fourth with 11 wins. Brody Atkinson would tie North Adelaide's Darren Jarman for the McGarry medal with 23 votes. Sturt would play a talented and fierce North Adelaide side in the elimination final where Sturt lost by seven points in a washed out bog. Phil Carmen was reappointed for two more seasons. The 1998 season started off promising for the club. No senior players had left and added to their depth. Ruckman Barnaby French would play for the club when not playing for the Port Adelaide Power. 1997 male medalist Mervyn Continuary was recruited from Talon Bend. Dashing forward Jared Twitt was brought to the club from New South Wales. A promising junior from Subiaco, Adam Lange, and Michael Curtis from Tumby Bay would join Sturt. All this culminated in a minor premiership for the Double Blues, their first since 1978. They would face West Adelaide in the second semi-final where Sturt won by 19 points, with Jared Twitt kicking five goals in the affair. 
after having a winless year, the Double Blues would play in a grand final three years later. No doubt, in the midfield, David, Simon Feast we've talked about, Tim Weatherall, he's tenacious and terrific, combining with the experience of Johnny Richter and Brody Atkinson, one of the sensational midfielders, if not arguably the best player in the competition, Mark Maley. Yes, David, I've been pretty excited also. Young Jarrett Twitt and Mervyn Catenary, Muppy Catenary, he's been an absolutely sensation in this year's finals. Yeah, and for that one game against West Adelaide, but really, I mean, double blues, they're set for a big one. But in the middle of the ground, Simon Feast will contest the first ruck up against Daniel Jakes. Jakes gets his first hand, the ball comes to ground level. Coming in hard was Carter. Carter couldn't take it. Added pace and a tremendous amount of experience. A real leader and will have a big influence on the outcome of today's game. French throws it down the throat of Port Adelaide skipper Ball Ace. Now, they haven't made a change. Petura's still on Burgoyne, but uh, Maloney was just doubling up on him before, so they might be two-teaming him. Brown over the top. Clever work, Port Adelaide. Jakes pirouettes around and dispatches a kick forward. Dropping under it to Chalmers. Big fly from Scotty Hyer, but Hodges, but Chalmers has marked it. That is a great mark. Full of courage and character. There's no doubt about the athleticism and the football ability of this man. He can certainly get the ability to kick this through at the run from the middle in 1992 and uh, he is a prodigious kick from 40 out the distance won't trouble him neither will the accuracy first goal for the 1998 grand final goes down Chalmers has won young Timmy Weatherall gets around three or four players puts it out in front chance here for White the big arms go up to the line the goal umpire yes he does indicate it has so another score for the Magpies they're now one goal two eight Double Blues just with that solitary point, so they're seven points behind. We'll play nearly 14 minutes into this first quarter. You remember Ken, don't we, Bamford against Central? He ignited Port Adelaide in that first elimination final. It's full of energy and has a great future, Bamford. Fred Gold out to Irvin, who's also had a pretty solid uh, season. Almost made the ABC team of the year, just missing out. Kennett recovers the ball after dropping it. I think there's just a little bit of uh, greasy palms and nervous energy there. Burton chest mark. Now that was strong. Tremendous physical strength. You see there on replay. Former Port player who's made Port uh, third, his home. 65-21 going into today. An interchange made. Richter off, continuing on. As Burton goes for goals, the double blue fans rise as one. Burton gets the double blues first in the 98 grand final. Somebody talked about Higgins. A lot of times. There'd be a few people at tail and Ben hoping he does pretty well today. He's got a cold following. Oh, Jared Twitt did all the hard work, got through, and he was running to the open goal when he dropped the ball. Well, is that that sweaty palm syndrome we've talked about, Ken? It's just over exuberance from a young, exciting player, but did very all... costly in that situation, oh, unfortunately, all... for the double blues. Did all the hard work, didn't he? Throw in. Him up with strong physical tackle. Stephen White uh, suffering a dose of the flu through the week. You just wonder what effect that'll have. Lennon releases it to Weatherall. Start of the season at the back line. Vasnik turned into a wonderful running midfield player and he finds quit. None whatsoever, David. No excuses today out here. I know in, time, in games past, players get to the line and play, but grand final day, it doesn't matter what happens previous. When you're out there, you've just got to do the job. What a good recruit uh, Jared Twitt has been. Young Einstein, recruited for the ACT Rams in the under-18s. 26 goals, 17 for the year third on the Double Blues goal kicking list. That one just doesn't quite carry the line. It's off hands for a point. He gave it every opportunity, Twit. I thought he almost ran too close to the man on the mark and had the chance of it being smothered or touched. But in fact, it was touched right on the line. Ooh. Ooh. In one leg off the deck. Jared Twit there. Now that's going to be some contro controversy over that. Certainly be talked about if uh, there's a goal in it at the end of the day. Well, uh, clearly, North East was behind the line, but did he get his hand forward? That's the question. Our, anger ang our camera angle wasn't conclusive, but... Feast, Feast misses the mark he should have taken. Comes back to the Premier. The Premier kicks the ball into the man on the mark, which was bad, but continuing there again. Good work by Mervyn Continuary. Back to Feast. The pressure is definitely on out there, fellas. I'd rather be sitting up here, I'm sure, David, in the coach's box. No doubt about that. You blokes are going soft. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd all like to be out there, but realistically, none of us can. Steed towards full forward. Thread goal. Scotty Hodges lost his footing. 
Thread goal was pulled off the ball and Burgoyne was dragged. The umpires allowed both incidents to play on. Not bad umpiring. Here comes Scotty Hodges to collect a few. Snap for goal. Oh, it's carried. It's gone through. It was Chalmers. And he's got it. He's got his second. Oh, the Port Adelaide fans are wrapped. Burgoyne, what play. He just never took his body off the line of the footy and kept pushing it forward. Chalmers, brilliant snap out of a tightly congested situation he's second for the quarter playing in the hardest position on the ground centre half forward great start by Brett Chalmers that's his second for the quarter that's the Magpies second Adelaide, Jakes and Feast, Feast swings the tap it uh, falls down Jakes off the brown now Steve, Port Adelaide are running a long bomb, oh well done Maloney put himself on the line and he's certainly paid Oh, the Port Adelaide crowd don't like it, and I think the double blues admired his courage. The mark was paid. When you make up your own mind, there was no doubt there was a great deal of commitment and courage, but did he hold it long enough? Takes Bergon keeps the ball in. Again, we see Mark Couture around that left leg, coming out hard as wide up over the top. Maybe he should have given away the free kick. He has, and the umpires let it go on. Chance of Bruce Lennon needs the lead up forward. At the back there, looks like Ambrose. Great commitment by Ambrose. A chance here. It is. And great goal again by Nathan Urban. Yes, the last two attacking forays have come from the wingman of the Double Blues. Urban there kicking that goal. Lennon missing one just previous. But there's the man that makes it all happen so often for the Double Blues. Brody Atkinson just forcing that ball, keeping it alive in the forward line. And the running Irvine there. Able to finish off with support from Twit. There, the one percent is sacrificial acts, the team things, the tackles, the smothers, the blocks, which are also evident in that passage of play. Trent Orman Allen thumps it down. Atkinson taken high. Doesn't wait for the umpire to blow the whistle. He just plays on himself and keeps pushing on. This is Lennon, half back uh, flank. Oh, well done, Fred Gold running down. Scotty Hodges has had to go with him. Scotty's feeling the effects of the heat too, I can tell you. White over the top of that one. Gets the handball away to Barnaby French. Big fellow forces it forward into the path of Robertson who can drive from 50, but no, he gives it to Kachinri. Quick pace, short. Oh, the kick was just a little bit too hard, and Jared Twitt mops up and hits oh. the post. Young Einstein. He's had his chances today, and he's got two points for his efforts. Yes, he's got a difficult situation there, Phil Carmen, whether to bring Richter back on, Twitt off. Twitt certainly had his opportunities yeah. to have a couple of goals. In fact, three. Does he leave the young player on and let him settle? I think the correct decision to leave him on. Barnaby French over the top, thumps the ball back into the forward lines. Weather will take it high. The Premier picks it and kicks. He's bought up a goal. The Premier kicks his first for the afternoon. And that, I think confirms the reason why you might leave a player like Twit on. Combining with Catenary and Kennant, they have superior leg pace for their opposition and they are just creating havoc. Kennett, I think, has been well in the best players for the Double Blues, if not their best at half forward. Just loved him up at half forward. He's just contested everything and now finished with a snag. Oh, I love that look by David Mackay just gave you. But he has, I agree with you, David. The handball to Atkinson. Atkinson starting to get into the game too. Drives it uh, short. Uh, the kick wasn't well presented, was it? Polton came through for Chendry, just sheer pace. Befuddles everybody. Steedy got him. Carter came in. They're just trying to unsettle the uh, movie Kajinri. They know what he can do if he gets free. And confident he can be destructive. But Kajinri and Twit up forward at the moment really are causing them trouble. And also Kennett on that left leg running from that half forward flank is also very, very dangerous. Irvin with the kick forward over the top of it. Feast couldn't get there. Oh, Kajinri, that was Grease Lightning. And Twit with two points. Goes going and misses. Three points to Jared Twitt. He's been so good this year. 26-17 coming into the match. And in the big one, when the pressure's on, he's just hurried his work. It's only early days yet, and he is an opportunist small man in that forward line. The ball. Pachura races off after this one. Gee, that's my pet hate, you know, when they hatch it, you've got to get it out. Pachura, short, Richter. Well, he needs to find a bit more of it. The pace is hurting him at the moment. A high ball towards half forward. Lennon was up and down. Couldn't bring it down. Well done, Northeast Fegat. 
had the presence of mind to thump it on, but Catenary steals it away. Grease Lightning, he's opened up the forward lines for Sturt. White handballs over the top. Look at this, here comes Burton. Oh, oh he bubbled it, but he yes. made it. Oh, the voice is gone. He's got his second. Well, it was numbers at half forward that created that for the double blues. Their structure was terrific, starting from Urban at half back. Catenary there exploded onto the footy and just kept it alive and White with a good understanding of what was around him, put it over the top to Mert Burton, who also almost <laughs> muffed it up, but was able. Oh, Muffy Coutinho, he's alive out there at the moment. Dangerous as ever, long with Twit. A change has been... Oh, sensations here are happening. Scotty Hodges is coming off. Tommy Carr's coming on for his first run. Richter has come off the pace, a little hot for him, and Powell has come on to take his first part in the game. Burton! Julian Burton kicked one so far in this quarter. They got one in the first. Well, now Kenny Sheldon line up for his second of the quarter. It's terrific stuff there. Strong. Just grab the ball with one grab. Beautiful to watch. But the advantage of getting the ball forward out of the centre contest. The bicep vein there popping out of Julian Burton's right shoulder. He'll walk in slowly, get into a trot. Then he'll kick the ball. It's a beautiful kick by Julian Burton. The flags are flying behind. I don't know why, because the umpires put up one finger. Crucial miss that from the gun full forward. Expensive miss for the double blues. As Hodges back onto the ground. Chalmers now into Ruck. The double blues have the support again, taking on Alfred Steed or Morgan. Steed's gone down. Whoa. Some tough work done out there, David. And it's going to get tougher, you just suspect. Well, Adelaide don't lay down and die in finals. Orman Allen releases Binky. He's been a dominant goal kicker in this final series. And today he gets his first. That's the one that Port Adelaide needed, the one on the way back. And Binky, who's uh, kicked four, seven and four the last three weeks, gets the one that brings Port Adelaide back. Down, Carter comes up with the loose scrum. Atkinson applied the tackle but it's recovered by Weatherall, who drives a high one towards half foot. Now, Muffy was going to have a fly, I thought, but it was White. Well, I'm glad Muffy stayed down because White took a screamer. White. Too far out? No, I think he can get this. Into the breeze. He, he's a prodigious kick. He'll either drop it short or he'll go for it. He's dropped it short. And Burton, off hands. Twit. Oh, what a great recovery. Now he's still oh, no. Four points, Jared. <laughs> well, he's, uh, he could have been the dominating player on the ground, couldn't he, Jared Twit? Fieger takes it and runs, trying to draw the player there in Petua. He's got Berg on out wide, now steadies himself, goes up to Scotty Hodges. A great kick. Hodges should take it. He couldn't. Great work there by the defence for the double blues. As well as Hodges was doubling back and put the ball to the goal square. A terrific defence by Soderstrom. Great space here. Been created by the double blues. taken by Burgoyne. If Irvin, get, if Irvin gets up, it will be a miracle. It was Carr, wasn't it? Tommy Carr, I reckon, came on. Tommy Carr came on, in the change five minutes ago on the centre wing. Now, that was a good body contest. Let's see whether he lifts his, whether he takes him high, drops the shoulder. Yeah, got him high. That's the free kick. Yeah, only... Now, Irvin's still down. We see it taken by Carr. So the game will be held up here until Irvin can either get to his feet or a stretch can get out there. Irvin wants to play on. He's a pretty tough customer, as Nathan Irvin puts his hands on his head. He will be dazed for a while. A player cannot receive that sort of hit and continue with a clear head. Players go down. Will they respond? Well, Phil Carman said they're going to play the football. They're not going to play the man. And he is wonky, no doubt about that. The kick was a shocker. And it won't hurt just to take him off, give him a rest. To the double blues credit, they've withstood it. The learning improved from it. Ball sum forward. Alfie Steed comes through. Left leg chips the ball high. Chance for Binky to run onto it. He get there, he does, and takes the mark as Brian Binky. In the second quarter. We'll line up for his second. So Brian Binky on the 50-meter line puts it on its way. It's a beautiful kick there by Binky. It's through the middle. That's his second. And that's the Magpies fourth. And now trail by four points. 30 minutes 
and I think you'll find this will be a tough, hard third quarter as both sides go in at half-time and just reset. You can feel the emotion mark already out there and uh, some tension rising. Atkinson's not happy with Brown with his treatment. Came a little bit late, did Brown. Chalmers up over the top just to help Brown out, but Atkinson just doesn't allow anything to happen. Look at there, David Tiller, former North Adelaide champion, former state player, now the runner for Phil Carmen. Just having a few quiet words also to the Magpies players. We'll discuss that the siren is gone and Sturt going to halftime of the 98 grand final with a four point lead kick. And you just feel the emotions bubbling over. And you just hope that uh, Sturt can uh, just go back, recover. Port Adelaide come out and play the brand of football that we've seen them play in finals, which has been devastating. Towards the Magpies forward line. A bit of a pressure, he gives it the feast. He goes back and wide to find Maloney. Maloney throws it on the boot. Great leap from behind there. Looked like it came from Chalmers. Jumping at everything this afternoon. Across to Twitt. He's eager to get rid of it. Across to Weatherall. Weatherall needs to set it up. He had time to find his forward player. It's over the top. I don't believe Timmy Weatherall from the back pocket has made some ground and has kicked his first major for the afternoon. The double blues have struck first blood in this third quarter. The dominance of the double blues, Port Adelaide. Kachinri got legged as he went down, failed to the umpire. Twit over the shoulder, bends it back not quite far enough. And Burton couldn't quite control it, it was out of bounds on the full. There's Atkinson getting hold of this at the moment. Atkinson's had five handballs so far in this third quarter, so really is getting his work break up at the moment. We see Twit, what did he do oh! this time? Oh! Carter's done now, it. Now, damn me. Seen. Now that's the stuff he does in big games, and that's why he never make an AFL list. That's just dumb. Absolutely dumb. No need for that at all. It'll be 25 or 50. What's the umpire going to call here? Well, thankfully, we didn't get a shot of that, Stephen Carter. I'm a huge fan of that boy, but no way is there any need for that in football. And that's what he does in big games. We've marvelled at his discipline this final series. He's been unbelievably disciplined. And then in one foul swoop on the biggest game of the day, he lets himself down. Well, if Jared Twitt happens to kick his first goal this afternoon, I would, if I was coach Stephen Williams, I'd I would drag off. Stephen Carter off. Undisciplined act. Twitt puts it on its way. It's an awkward floating kick forward. Well, he can be thankful he didn't kick it. Now, that's uh, Twitt's fifth point for the day, by the way. OK, you get all the game. And then just butter up again. Now, let's see if he can make amends, Carter, because uh, he certainly has been a great player for them through this final series. Robertson thumps it down. Lennon releases the handball, but Binky streams away. Here's Steed. It's a turnaround. Let's see if he can crash through. Oh, he's very good in that situation, Steed. And he delivers the knockout punch. That's a big one. Well done, Alfie Steed. Big jacks to Ruckman. Good hands from Carter in centre wing, bringing the ball in. Ball back to a five-point margin here. We're nearly ten minutes into this third quarter. Ball stumped down. Weatherall misses the kick. Quickly in there was Tregenza. Tregenza gives it to Burgoyne. Burgoyne to Brown. It's up forward. Going high was Beaky, but just as good an effort coming to ground. Number 14 with Scotty Robinson. Ashley, his replacement. French knocks it down. Good work. Chance of going over and over. Got the height over to Genza. Comes to the ground. Weather all again. Brilliant work. Round his body. Mervyn needs to go for this. He does. He takes the mark. He's paid. Mervyn contendery. Little Muffy has a chance here to bring up his first goal for the afternoon. It's a courageous mark under the circumstances. Sitting right under, under it. And Ponton doing everything to spoil it. Just holding his ground. Protecting the flight of the ball. With a twist of the body, continually taking a chess mark. About a thousand people at Taylor and Bend uh, left their chairs as well. I was about to say that the Taylor and Bend Terrier lines up the left foot. He's dragged the kick. And it's behind a goal that was needed by the Double Blues. That would have given it a little bit of breathing space. Acting to that showed great courage. It's great courage, but terrific kick. Just beautifully weighted, as was that equally. Beautiful foot skills by Port Adelaide down the members' wing. You just sense the tide turning towards Port Adelaide. Jarks up and he's mark. got it. Lampire's paid that one. We talked about the tide turning. Now it's a uh, six-point ball game in favour of Sturt. And Jakes is not a renowned uh, kick, is he? To be fair, he's, in, he's improved in all assets of his game, aspects of his game, but his kicking's not... Quick to Burgoyne, beautiful play. <laughs> well, he's done that pretty well. And Burgoyne, who is a good finisher, drops it to the point of the square. 
Yes. And off the ground. Is that Chalmers again? I think it might have been. Off the ground and he's kicked it. Brett Chalmers gets his third. Well, it's like a Rovers goal for the Ruckman, an opportunist goal, and a big one for Port Adelaide. Out the way, 40 apiece. The change has been made again. Matty Powell's come off. John Richter's gone on. Toby Kennedy uses his head and knocks the ball forward. Coming through hard there, look like one back beat it again. <laughs> He's in everything this last quarter, this third quarter. It's just really, this is starting to hot up. Burgoyne again, looks brilliant. Goes backwards, runs backwards as fast as he goes forward. Clayton, Ashley, over the top. A chance here for the Magpies. Binky just needs to pick it up, get the ball forward. Jared Poulton takes it. He's got Tregenza in the middle of the ground. He goes in that direction. Tregenza quickly gets the ball moving. He's got Carter has come forward. Great mark again by Carter. Kicks up forward. The back is Norman Allen. In front there is Red Gold. The umpire's caught play on. Brown. Brown takes it as he kicked another one. I think David Brown has. That's his first for the afternoon. Pie's back line has been outstanding this third quarter. Rebounded brilliantly. Finally comes the ball ace to the captain as we hear the three-quarter time siren here. It's a seven-point margin, Ken, to the Maggies. Senior games, it's a big job ahead of him, but fresh legs and the confidence of youth. Continuary, releases yeah. to it. Now this is an important kick, he's already, ooh. Well, I'll add him up for you. I think it's five points and two out of bounds on the full. Gumper. Oh, some strength shown by Atkinson. Great hands as he went to ground. Weather all around his body. A chance that they need a mark, the Blues. They can't find one at the moment. Where's this gone? They're here, they're home. The game is not over, it's still alive. Nathan Irvine brings up his first. The double Blues are going to come home. That's his second. And running from the ground with Sturdy in possession and his direct opponent used. That's the reason the ball is in oh, the double Brody Atkinson, you champion. Oh, what a set play. Atkinson has done it. And Burton finishes it off and gets his third. And the double blues are back in front. Now we find out what Port Adelaide have got left in the tank. They'll have to dig deep. Sturt are on an emotional high. No doubt about that. That's what we've come to see. A close and exciting game, and there is Atkinson, last year's McGarry medalist. And Burton registering his third goal. Now, obviously, Stephen Williams's phone is not working because as that goal was kicked, he just threw the phone down, and he's gone down to the bench. He wants to control it from the bunker. Work to do now to get the momentum back. Yeah, look, I think you're right. It started to turn, I think, Sturt's way, but, uh, you know, hopefully the boys can just uh, keep the run and uh, turn it back around. Well, and boys. Sorry, Mum, get going. No, you're right, David. Thank you very much, fellas. As David Brown goes forward, Obst. Now it's Bamford. Outside 50. Great smother in defence was Geddes. Bamford with the long clearing handball into space. Obst steadies one step and goes towards goal. Oh, he's kicked it. That is a big goal in a grand final, Obst. It is a big goal. Obst is only, I think, his third or fourth possession. It's in these situations where every player has got his foot, use his football acumen, his football intelligence to exploit his opposition as well as being able to be defensive. Like you can't be the player that lets your man get the ball and a free access to goal, but you've got to try and outsmart them as well. Bamford goes towards goal. Oh, well, the goal up by leans yeah. back and says, oh, team lifter. Port Adelaide through Bamford. Bamford bangs it through and gets his first nine kicks, seven handballs. I don't think there's been a kick or a handball or anything that he's done that's been more damaging than that today. That's all day. But that a very special goal. Out to an eight-point margin. The ball. Players' bodies in the live vision. Carter through to half forward. Matthew Ashley. Matthew Ashley. He goes to half forward. Oh, it's got it. It's Payton. He won't miss this one. Had a cider before. And Binky acting now as a third tall in the forward line is just very. It's important that he gathers his thoughts here and just approaches the goal. Walks straight, drops it straight, follows through straight, and there's your answer. Does that. Three goals to Binky today. I think that might be it for Port Adelaide. You can just feel the fans. They think they've got it. 
Hoggles the ball out, gives Shredgold a chance. He needs to run with the ball, does Shredgold. Comes inside with support. He does that to Soderstrom. Soderstrom will chip it wider. He finds his player in question in Nathan Irvin. Irvin just settles down, looks forward. Got the movement. Kennett will come across. He needs to bounce away. He does that on his left leg. Needs to give him a chance up forward. He does it again. At the back is northeast. The free kick's gone. The whistle's blown. Plus 25 metres. So a certain goal now coming up for the double blues. Is there still time, David Mackay? I don't think so. I think Port Adelaide are way too professional in this situation. And they will be the first team since Norwood in 1984. Lang. The West Australian under-18 captain just a couple of years ago puts it through a consolation goal for the Double Blues. There'll be disappointment tonight at Port Adelaide with nine points up, 26 and a half minutes. They just know how to hold on. You've just got to admire them. They never give up Port Adelaide. Oh, towards Binky. Well, he's got away, hasn't he? He's kicked three, and he's about 40 metres out on a very tight angle. I thought it was low when Darren Smith won in 86 with 49. So Brian Binky, a long bomb. That is a grand final goal. Brian Binky, you legend. Port Adelaide take the 1998 grand final. Brian Binky sinks a miracle goal. And I think they know they're home from here. Celebrations tonight at Alberton. Trying, they realise they need another goal. Atkinson, one of the better players for the double blues, chips the ball out, gives Lang a chance to jump into it. A good mark by Lang. Under receiving extreme amount of pressure there from behind by Paul Northeast. 15 point margin. This will bring it back to nine points again. The time is running out. Lang has slipped it out. He's released it and he's kicked the goal. That's Adam Lang's second. This has done well, Lang, since coming off interchange, taking up his position forward pocket, full forward in this last quarter. from half forward, plays it on quickly, a high bomb, who could get their Lang one-handed attempt, off-hand it was Maloney down from defence, tried to crash through and couldn't, Port Adelaide. Is and Stephen Carter and Paul North East in the last line, over the top is Jared Paulton, thumps the ball 40 metres and finds Brown and David, the final siren, sees the Magpies winning by nine points. Port Adelaide have won by nine points in euphoria. A round of congratulations to Port Adelaide, the 1998 SANFL Grand Final winners. Stephen Williams, the coach, congratulating his players around. Despite Sturt's exceptional effort to shut down great forward Scott Hodges, the Double Blues still had no answer for Port's attack. A disappointing and controversial loss to the Magpies in the Grand Final. Phil Carmen was looking for a return to form for next season. Unfortunately for him, some of his best players would be leaving for a chance at AFL level. His ruckman, Simon Feast, was drafted by the Sydney Swans, and rookie Adam Lange would play for North Melbourne. Brody Atkinson and Jared Twitt would be recruited by the Crows, however would be available for selection, and Barnaby French would see more playing time with the power. To replace these losses, Fabulous Phil would once again prove to be a fabulous recruiter. Securing the expertise of dynamic rooster Damien Squire, former Crow and Glenelg Tiger Sean Tasker, and veteran blood Dean Woosnam. This was good enough to return to the finals bracket with Damien Squire in his first year at the club winning the McGarry medal. This, however, was not good enough to make a strong finals campaign. Managing to finish fourth with 12 wins, they would lose to grand finalist Norwood in the elimination final by 39 points. On a positive note, the club would win the reserves premiership of 1999. John Richter announced his retirement at the end of the season after playing 258 league games for the club and Sean Tasker also retired. During the 1999 and 2000 season, Phil Carmen recruited Bulldogs Mark Conway to the club and developed more depth to his side by bloody young players such as Jade Sheedy, Toby Thurstons, Brett Howman, Daniel Wicks, Xavier Campbell and Stuart Graham. Brody Atkinson, who spent the majority of the season with Sturt, was delisted by the Crows and was able to fully commit to the Double Blues. Jared Twitt would also return.
Similar to the 97 season, Sturt started the 2000 season with a slump, but managed to find form in the latter half of the season and making finals for the fourth consecutive year. Damien Squire won his second McGarry medal. Sturt, with impeccable form heading into their finals campaign, dominated Norwood by 65 points in the elimination final. Then defeating staunch rivals Port Adelaide by 19 points in the second semi-final. And then facing the Eagles in the preliminary final where they were outclassed by 22 points. The Eagles would then go on to face Central Districts under coach Peter Jonas where the Bulldogs achieved their first premiership in the club's history. Phil Carmen was left scratching his head. He had turned the club around from wooden spooners and made them premiership contenders but always fell short. His solution was to keep the same system and recruiting big forward Brant Chambers from Subiaco and blooding a future star in Martin Matner. Shockingly, Carmen's Double Blues had missed finals by two wins in 2001. The Sturt board made the decision to sack Phil Carmen at the end of the 01 season. A decision that is still talked about in Sturt circles and remains controversial to this day. The board would hire 1993 McGarry medalist Brenton Phillips as their new coach, who was given a fantastic team made even better by the returning Matthew Dent, a Sturt junior making his way back after being an AFL journeyman and the versatile Simon Feast, who was delisted by the Swans as a surprise decision as Feast had finished second in the VFL Best and Fairest, the JJ Liston Trophy. Brenton Phillips, would face his first season at the helm of Sturt with many weapons at his disposal. In 2002, the Double Blues were coming. The Blues finished their season with 16 wins under their belt and qualified third overall. They faced an early scare from the Red Legs in the qualifying final but managed to win by 33 points and then faced reigning Premier Central Districts under Alistair Clarkson in the second semi-final where in a tight affair lost by 14 points. Sturt had a chance to redeem themselves in the preliminary final against Norwood. They did so, winning by 49 points. During this time, Tim Weatherald and Jade Sheedy managed to both tie for the McGarry medal in 2002, becoming joint winners. Sturt were now facing one of the most dominant teams seen in SANFL history, the 2000s Bulldogs. But one upside they had over the Bulldogs was that they were playing with five McGarry medals on their side. It would be the ultimate battle of talent versus system. Captain Chris Threadgold was controversially dropped by Coach Phillips and Bruce Lennon missed the game because of a knee injury. It has to be good again against Arnold and their midfield just has to not only compete but beat Central's there. Set for a start in the 2002 SANFL Grand Final. It's Central's against Sturt. Tony Day bouncing the ball in his first Premiership decider. Quickly taken by Conway for Sturt. Graham comes off the edge of the square and bumps Conway. Bodies in as you'd expect and you'll expect some push and shove first up. Back in the gap was Conway. Ball spills Cooper. Away they go. Curtis to Powell. Matna thought he might have slipped. How did he get out of there? Good pace by Matna. High ball was he dealt with after. Travelled. Well he's gone too far. Thanks Tim. Players out this side of the ground. He doesn't reach the boundary. Steinburner reaches the ball. Goes inside. From behind Conway, the former Central's player, takes a mark. They want to run the ball, and they do run the ball. It's off to Cooper. He breaks through half back, kicks long to half forward. Chambers the target. Chambers makes a strong grab for Sturt. Looks around, the forward 50 open. Players running back, including Wicks. The wind will let him get to the line. We'll see what his accuracy is like. He's had problems this season. Big, big kick away to the right, minus score. Sturt opens the scoring after five minutes of the grand final. It's to kick it as hard, just kick a 45 metre kick and just let the breeze do the rest. Tyson Hay gets a call from Hopwood, but the kick wasn't good enough. Read well by Squire. Squire, four goals last week, squares it up to half forward. Matna. So Martin Matten will go back and have a shot. The breeze like this, I thought Centrals might have just filled up a little bit deeper. Well, Damien Squire used it to perfection. Martin Matna for the first goal of the grand final. Loads up a long, accurate left footer. Goal on by, doesn't move. And we got our first. It's there. Taken by Steinburner, who's got Arnott running inside. So Central's loads something up. Long kick by Arnott. The target up there. Knocked away by Howman. Maloney, safe hands. Matna back to Maloney. So this dirt defence working pretty well. The short kick. 
taken by Wetherill. Away they go to Nelson. Nelson decides to kick it long to White. Thumped away. Good play. Atkinson always good with the hands. French wants to go back to Atkinson. Normally pretty clever here. Goes to Nelson. Nelson sits it up and loads up another behind. So the opportunity's coming thick and fast for the double blue. And clean to get it out. They need to create space for each other. So they need to push out of this contest. Still the players negate each other in the ruck. Here's Arnold trafficking the ball towards the boundary line in the end Sturt work the numbers in close again over the top it comes to Nelson Nelson closes to 50 what's he going to do have a crack or straighten up he goes with a hand pass off to White White on the left leg shapes it wait on the umpire it could be another one for Sturt it is and rely on Sturt not being able to put scoreboard pressure back on them let's talk about the win for just a moment it is significant to the advantage of Sturt right now and they are using it with Damien Squire an opportunity interesting way to execute it though Squire just changed his mind about kicking the ball so Jade Sheedy McGarry medalist needs to start this outside the left-hand goal post difficult kick from here he loads it up to the square it's a good kick good it call goes through <laughs> was it touched, touched. And just fingernails here uh, have saved uh, Paul Geiser. So just getting a oh, of some sorts. Gets up very much limping. Off to Powell and off the left foot. High to half forward. French comes and meets it. The tap down to Cooper. Little hand pass through to Weatherall. Didn't meet its mark. Now McGowan under a lot of trouble trying to beat the tackle. And a free kick. A reward for Little Weatherall. To at least a very bad and bruised rib. So a set shot from some 45 metres for Tim Weatherall. He likes it off the boot. He likes it as he goes through the goals. And Sturt has a third for the afternoon. Mark so far in the first term. It's been all the double blues as Cooper darts around, goes with a long kick. Chambers just works his opponent under it. Here comes White. Lovely hands to Chambers. Chambers inside 50. Shoots a goal. The double blues have their fourth. It's out to Tom. Sturt's favourite at the moment. Ball down again, Schooler unable to get a clean tap. Feast picks it up. Umpire will call for the ball again. Siren time. So just over 30 minutes played in the first quarter. And Sturt, 4 6 30 to one point. They couldn't have asked for a better opening term, Andrew. You know, they had good contests against Norwich. The protection of the big stand, the kick goes in from Barnaby French. And the big man, Stephen White, holds the ball up. We're just starting to stretch the Central District's back line. Stephen White missed 10 weeks during the season with a broken leg and he is going overseas at the end of the month with his housemate Dean Woosnam and he may well have a Premiership Cup to celebrate with as he kicks. Backbreaker, if Sturt can get it and maintain this pressure they could well run away with this game. The Central's advantage by a 50, they kick the ball up to a contest and away comes Sturt again, Matt Nutt down on the wing looking up forward for options. He goes inside to Curtis, or rather Cooper. Now Matner again, approaches 50. He'll load it up from 50, fades it back. Wait on the goal, oh, oh, what a kick! Oh, 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 oh. What stirred are at the moment? Wicks. Away they go through Powell. Nelson got it back to Maloney, who has been terrific so far. High ball, White in the pack. Sheedy just paddles. Looks for Weatherall, goes with a handball to Atkinson, he's caught, around the net, no, yes, free kick to Brody Atkinson. Five metres out, directly in front, Brody Atkinson to lengthen the gap between the two sides to 48 points. Leans back on it, never in doubt, he's popped it through his first. Pressure. Out wide, Feast almost takes it. Maloney does. Maloney held back after he handballed. Umpire set play on. Now Bellow dancing around. Maloney catches him. And out the back, Sheedy lays a tackle on McGowan. Now Gowans is in trouble. McGowan forces the ball forward. They get a bounce here. Centrals might be in. Great take by Stevens. Hand passes wide to Bellow. He's on his wrong foot, so he centers it up. What's a mark from behind Sibonela. Now Slade working. If he can get the ball forward, he does. There's their first goal. And it's got it. The Bulldogs back into attack. They're looking for their second goal. 40 points the difference. He loads it up. Looking for Ford at the back. On it. Oh, as they get it, the momentum of the game, you can feel it just starting to shift. He got back pretty quick, did on it? Goal umpire. Doesn't move. Goal number two to the doggies. Defenders. Boundary throw in. Must be only seconds to go. Nelson. Oh, grabs a footy. Kick around the corner. 
He's popped it through. Goal against the Tide to the Double Blues. Tumbling ball. Out comes Sibanala, who hasn't had much of it. Lays it off to Bello. Bello's got to get around the left boot. Long kick by Bello. Has it got the legs? Getting back. Thurston's takes the mark. Bello just really kicked through it. And Thurston's kicked the half back. It's half time. Back to Weatherall. Thought he might have got it. Weatherall's in a bit of trouble. Mown down. Gowans has got it. Short kick. Finds Steinburner. Steinburner inside 50. Over the top of the handball to Danny Stevens. Couldn't quite get there. Forward. Got the handball to Michael Stevens. Goal! Well, the first one. Handball looking for Steinburner. Wicks is there. Maloney falls over. James Gowans oh. has got him on a free kick. Will be paid the centrals for holding. Yeah, Just hanging. Depends on this kick. How important is this kick from Steinburner? Sits it up and puts it home. Doggies get their fourth. Wants to chip it to Bello. Now, Bello's been mucking around with the footy all day. Decides to load up this time. Free kick downfield. He's going to rebound strongly. So the challenge is really on. To reduce the margin to four goals, Danny Stevens. Goal up by doesn't move. The doggies are back. Again. They're under a bit of pressure now, the double blues. How will they handle it? Feast knocks down. Atkinson's there. Ball spills out. Kick forward. Bouncing ball. Paddle. Could it open up for the double blues? In goes Squire. Can he kick an important goal? I think he has. Off a stair. <laughs> Damien Squire. Good enough for Sturt on this side of the ground. Squire, if he can deliver. Whiteman's in a bit of space. And ahead of him is White on the lead. What's the kick like? Perfect. White. He'll turn inboard with his left leg. Wait on it. Here he comes, and Long looking for Chambers. Chambers two on one. Chambers gets as best he can wow. to the front. What a strong mark. Yeah. And Paul Glasser just missed the body then. He took his eye off the footy and went back and tried to shepherd Chambers. Missed the body. Heath Hopwood would have taken a very This is the excellent effort. Now he's got to finish off, though. This will be the one he kicks. Yeah. It's a very tough <laughs> kick, isn't it? One. Breeze blowing from his left to right. Have to shape it really well to get it through. Wait on the umpire. One point. Away goes Swatala again to the lead of Slade, who can't hook it in with one hand. Just waits for it to sit now. Closing in is Weatherall. And runs him out of bounds. Drops the footy. Yeah. Free kick to Timmy Weatherall. That's persistence. That's what it's all about. And Slade shouldn't have dropped it. He should have just taken it over the line. Indecision. High kick. Looking for Chambers again. Ball spills over the back. Squire. Goal! Exactly right, Michael Parsons. Free kick to Feast, who spots Campbell, who takes the mark. A couple of kicks out from goals, Xavier Campbell. White gives him something short. Good looking kick, White's got it. Well, good move by Stephen White. Time. Hard kick from this pocket for a left footer. Realistic, the breeze is going nearly straight behind him. The kick from right on 50. That's a high ball. White, he's given it a ride. He's given it a ride. It's home. Stevens, a couple of bounces, wants to make a statement, he's had three, he kicks it inside 50, looking for Danny Stevens, oh big ass, Maloney does well again, the physicality of it, in goes Sibonella Siren for three quarter time, and boy oh boy, goes wide to Dent, he's picked up a few possessions in this term already, Dent inside with the left leg, wants it to be accurate, well lots of fortune, came back to Xavier Campbell, his kick was a beauty and hooray to Edith Fears and it doesn't make any difference, because White marks it, wheels around on the left leg, his delivery out in front of Chambers. Feast in the square on his and own. And in the square is Feast. Turn around, turn around. He'd want him for mine. <laughs> having decided, well, oh, man. having no, made no decision, he, he didn't turn around. Lays back on the kick, went on the goal umpire, and the goal umpire signals with two fingers, does he? Yes, it up. Gets the call from Healy, wants it to sit. Looks a bit ruffled, does Daniel Healy. Breaks the tackle, kicks inside, McGowan takes the mark. 45 metres out, slight angle. Rely on Daniel Healing winning those one-on-one -on -one contests to try to create some scores. Long kick by McGowan is through for a goal. So Ricky McGowan, regular stage, 23-minute mark of the final term. Feast and Arnold, ball down. Nelson, who has been very handy. Weatherall hasn't had the best of days. Fights it off to Wicks. Wicks lines it up. Runs it home, the double blues by 46. Has a bounce, wants to chip it in short to Nelson. He's got to go under pressure from James Gowans. And Ricky McGowan, I should say. Good thing Cowan's not playing today because they have the quadrilla in. There's the siren. Sturt are premiers in 2002. Their first flag in 26 years.
With terrific and persistent forward half pressure all game, the Double Blues managed to defeat the Central District Giants by 47 points. Matthew Powell was awarded the Jack Odie Medal for his efforts. After obtaining the hard-earned Thomas Seymour Hill Trophy, the Double Blues deserved a well-earned respite. Celebrations were huge at Unley, especially given the struggles in the previous years. Some players stayed with their families, and others went overseas for an end-of-season trip, a very common practice of sporting clubs of all codes. The destination selected was Kuta Beach, Bali, and on October 12, many people, including members of the Sturt Football Club, were enjoying themselves in an establishment called the Sari Club. When occupants heard what they thought to be fireworks, however, the lights in the club went out. One of the Sturt players went to have a look. A little concerned, everybody remained calm until 11.05pm, when a bomb was detonated causing a huge explosion next to the club. The roof had caved in, smoke and dust filled the area. Panicked people scurried to find exits, and only left to do a head count days after. Julian Burton suffered life-threatening burns. Michael Curtis suffered a burst eardrum and many other players at the club received injuries. While the players regrouped, they noticed two were missing from their party, trainer Bob Marshall and player Josh Deegan. News of their whereabouts was unknown for hours until final confirmation. Bob Marshall and Josh Deegan, along with 200 other people, died as a result of an Islamic terrorist attack. The Josh Deegan Foundation was established by the Deegan family to assist patients at the Royal Adelaide Hospital Burns Unit. If you would like to donate, there will be a link in the description box of this video.